Hello everybody, welcome back to a very special tune chat here on Frontier Patriot today. It is our two year anniversary that Jesse and I have been together. Now we're not married yet, but we've been together for two years. That's we met, right. We met two years ago on May 7th, 2021. Yes, we're a few days early because this is Wednesday, but this is when you guys can see us, so we're doing it today. Two years? I think some of you guys out there think that we've been together for 10 years. It's only been just two years. Sure feels like it. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm what? just kidding. It's what? the best two years of my life so far. Yeah, it's it been really the best is. two years of my life too. I really, really agree. <laughs> and also with you guys. It's mm -hmm. two years that I've known you guys, and a little longer you guys have known Justine. So thank you for being with me for two years as well. Yes. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for now, <clears throat> we have roast lamb <laughs> from the early 1800s. <laughs> and we have a rice pudding. We also have some potatoes. I decided to go with it. No particular historic recipe. I just made some potatoes, which people back then would have done. They didn't always follow uh, cookbooks, you know? Yeah, use what you got. Exactly. And that's the thing, because the roast lamb suggested to serve it with asparagus. Well, we spent all our money on the lamb, so we don't have any left over for asparagus. <laughs> but we did have some potatoes laying around. So yes, we, we made did. some of that. And we're eating it with mustard because we are mustard people. We, we are mustard people. Mustard. Don't, don't even bother with the ketchup. Just ketchup can get, get out of here. Away. Out of here. Okay, so let's get started. We will say grace and dig in. Yes, ma'am. Is it my turn or your turn? Uh, I believe it's my turn. All right. Dear God, thank you for the company that we have today. Please bless every single one of them. Please maintain their health and the health of their long loved ones. And thank you so much for the food that we have today. May it nourish our bodies. And thank you for bringing Ron into my life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dig in. Lamb time. <laughs> mm, I love potatoes. Who doesn't I, love potatoes? I love potatoes. Potato, potato. But I love lamb, too. Spud. Spud. Hmm. Mm. I love spuds. Taters. Taters. Yeah, we call them taters oh. here. What do you guys call them? Yeah. Potato. You know, you go like to, to the south and they call like a sodi, they call it um, pop, is it? Or, mm -hmm. or soda pop. Mm -hmm. And up here we call it soda. Mm -hmm. And you go somewhere else and they call it sodi. So do you guys mm -hmm. call them spuds, taters, potatoes, potatoes? Is there another name for them? I don't know. I mean, I know, I know over in the UK, uh, what we call french fries, they call chips. Really? Yeah, you knew that. Stop it. You knew that. Or what they call <laughs> chips. No one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if French fries are chips, what are chips? What are chips? I know what they got I know they got Doritos and, and Lay's and stuff over there. What do they call them? Thinly fried potato crisp? Crisp? They Maybe they crisp? call them crisp. They call them crisp. I don't know guys, what do you call it? <laughs> if you're from the UK or anywhere over there in Europe, let us know what you call them. I'm super curious. Mm-hmm. That's just a random thought. And now I have to have it answered. <laughs> this is very, very good. It is. I didn't get a steak knife, so I'm going to use this. Serious knife. Mm. Move that out of the way so you guys can see. That's not a knife. This is a knife. That's a knife. If you've ever seen Crocodile Dundee, you get the reference. Mm hmm That's for our Australian viewers. And we've actually quite a few of y'all from Australia. It amazes me. Yeah, we have people watching from all over, which we greatly appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, this is not how I personally would prefer to make lamb. I think the best lamb receipt that we ever made was the one where it was cooking slowly. I think it was for two hours. That was the last one we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Dutch oven. That was the best lamb I've ever had in my life. This one, you roast it over an open fire. So, it's really good. 
The crust on it with the flour and the butter exceeded our expectations significantly. I was worried it was going to burn, but it didn't. No. And it, and that's my favorite part about this. It Mine tastes too. good, but the, the outside, that the crunch, that's what I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the outside formed a very nice crust to it. Didn't burn at all. Didn't just wash away with the drippings dripping down like I thought it was going to. Right. But it did dry out a little bit just yep. because it wasn't sitting in its own juices. Yeah, it wasn't sitting in its juices. The juices dripped down. And we did baste it, but you can't sit there for an hour and just... You, you, know, you can only baste them so much and it's just going <laughs> to run off. Right, it just but, ran off. But it, the taste is great, but I love the texture and the, and the look is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I, I say this is a this is a win. I give this an eight out of ten. I give this one a seven point five out of ten. <laughs> Respectable. <laughs> yeah, it is really good. But I, I think that the best lamb recipe I've ever tried, historic and modern, was actually when we cooked it in that. Uh, Technically, it was a chicken fryer skillet that I cooked it in. That's what those are called. Those really deep mm. cast iron skillets are called chicken fryers. Mm -hmm. It's just what I had. <laughs> but uh, man, that was the best fall off the bone lamb I've ever had in my life. But this is really good too. But if you can only do one, because <laughs> lamb is very expensive in most areas of the world. Imagine if they were combined. If the good one inside the... Uh... The cast iron also had the crust on it with the juices in it. Yeah, see, that wouldn't work, though. It'd be impossible. It'd be impossible. Because the it would outside... It soggy. Yeah. <laughs> but you can always dream about it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Good job on this. So, thank you. So, Ron and I met two years ago. Yes. And we fell in love on camera. I was... It was this was 10 pounds ago and a few hair follicles ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, what you guys seen, the first episode of me uh, in the kitchen with Justine, uh, you can see how awkward it is. I think I said three words and I <laughs> didn't know what to say. We were, I was so shy. We were already dating though, but, but we had only been dating for what was it, a, two weeks? Yeah. One week? Yeah, like maybe a week. Mm hmm. That's back <laughs> when we were at the Stevenson house. Yes. But yeah, it's it's funny to look back on those, or, or it's fun to look back, I should say, mm -hmm. and see everything we did because it was real. Not the story stuff, but the the way we look at each other or talk to each other or treat each other, that's real. So, yeah, that's So you real. guys seen all we of We don't the... have a script. No. Those kisses that were in the, the film, that's all real. Those are... <laughs> yeah, we'd only been dating for about a week before yeah. I dragged him into my madness. I, I have a confession to make. What are are something I want to I want to say? It's probably something I already know. I don't know if you know this. What is it, Ron? It actually makes me sad when I see the ones before I knew you. I don't know why. It. Mm. I'm not saying. You, you looked happy. You were smiling, and I know I wasn't happy before I met you. But it's like when I see that, it's like, oh my gosh, from from what from what I know now and all that. Mm -hmm. It's like, only if you look at the date. This sounds crazy. It's like. Only two more weeks. Don't worry. You're you're gonna meet me, and I'm gonna meet you, and, and everything's gonna rescued. everything's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And that's for myself too. But it, it's like, man, I almost know you. It, it's it's <clears throat> February when the video came out, and I didn't meet her until the very end of April. Yeah, because my my or channel May. was what was it like five or six months? Yeah, you started in October older than of before I met Ron. So I had it for about half a year before I met Ron. <laughs> And I think part of what he's trying to say, and I'm not really ashamed to say it, but I was in a very abusive relationship before I went into a relationship with Ron. And it was the worst period of my life that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And so even though I was smiling on camera, I was a very sad person. Very, very sad and depressed all the time and in denial about it. But um, when I met Ron, my life has done a 180. I know it might sound really cheesy, but I swear every day I wake up now and I know that you're still breathing, you're still alive, you're still on the side of the dirt. I am so happy. <laughs> I am so incredibly grateful that you are in my life, Ron. I am very grateful that you're in mine too. You're my best friend. Thank you. You're my bestest friend. <laughs> I have best friends. I can't replace them, so she's my bestest friend. 
You're my world. You're my no, everything. <laughs> Just Justine is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I I was a lonely Aww. person. Um, I wasn't in a bad relationship or nothing like that. I was just kind of lost. I would say, mm -hmm. uh, never really had anybody to talk to other than my friends. My friends were were great. I I was one of them where I was more closer with my friends than I was my my family. Well, which is fine. Every, everybody's different, like that. You know, it's whoever you're comfortable to, to talk to and and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. well, when I met her, it just changed everything. And I was a little nervous. It's like, man, if I if I tear down these walls and and then she blubbers me off next week. It's really kind of hurt. But no, no, every, everything was, was great and it is great. And uh, I'm very thankful to have her uh, in my life. Let me give you guys some relationship advice. Your mom might have told you this and maybe you're not listening to her. Well, hear it from me and take it if you want it. <laughs> hear it from me. <laughs> hear, 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 hear. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. Hear, hear, hear. Okay, so you need to find someone who has the same morals as you do. Yes. That is the most important thing in a relationship that is going to keep you guys together long term. If you're with someone who has completely different morals than you do, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. It's going to fall apart. You're going to cry yourself to sleep. You're going to be depressed. That was my problem. I was with someone who had no morals. I don't even physically and emotionally abusive to me. And just a very bad person. Not a Christian at all. And now I'm with Ron. We have this exact same morals. We want the same things out of life. Ron is as kind to me as I am to him. Which is very refreshing. <laughs> because we've all been in a relationship before where we put more effort into it than the other person does. Yeah. But with him and I, we are 50-50. We're team. Our saying is teamwork makes the dream work. We say that almost every single day because we are a team and together we're making it happen. We're making it work. Teamwork makes? Is a dream work. That's right. <laughs> so you have to find someone with the same morals as you mm -hmm. and you have to realize that in a relationship it is a team. It is 50-50 effort. That's the most important advice I can ever give mm -hmm. you relationship wise. And don't think you can compromise on that because you will be miserable. You don't want to either. Yeah, it, you don't want to. You it, only have one life to live. It's a two-lane road. It ain't a highway and a bike path. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, people ask us all the time, are you guys really in a relationship? Yeah. Like, is it real? Yeah. We are. <laughs> we are really in a relationship. You know what? Let's just answer these random questions now. All right. Okay, so random <laughs> question that we get all the time. Justine, why aren't you wearing your engagement ring? Ron and I are engaged to be married. This is my fiancé. I, so I take it off because I have a very modern looking wedding I mean, engagement ring mm -hmm. and I just feel like it would be very distracting on camera uh, for 1820s so I take it off and so you don't get all nasty and so I don't get food all over it she yeah. likes to work with her hands more than a spoon mm -hmm. half the time in case you all right. notice so it's like don't do that it's gonna get yeah. dough all up in there yeah so what I do is every time before we film I take it off and I put it in a box Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, the box that Ron proposed to me with, he made the ring box. Yes, the, the painted box. Yeah, yeah, he painted it and everything. So I put it in there. Um, we're still engaged, of course, but I just don't want it to get nasty, and it's not period correct looking, so... Now explain a period correct one so they don't think I went cheap and got a modern one. It, it's a big gaudy uh, thing, right? You don't yeah, want to wear that today, yeah, so... Yeah, often it was just a simple band. Usually it was gold. Silver was so, so popular. Uh, uh, some people wore silver rings, but usually it was gold rings. They did have wedding rings Yours is in this white time gold. period. I didn't know that. It's white gold. Okay, that's cool. See, I'm not a jewelry person. I'm not either. I never wear jewelry. But so that's what I, I picked up. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Rowan. <laughs> um, I what? told him if you gave me a ring pop, I'd still say A yes. ring pop. I remember them. Me too. I like the cherry ones. <laughs> I like the green ones. Anyway. <laughs> What's the next random question that uh, we the, always get? The next random question, are you guys married? No, we're not married. We're engaged to be married. <clears throat> when is your wedding going to be? Okay, so. There's no date set yet. Yeah. We are, this is also slash an update on the house. In about yeah. two weeks, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, the foundation guys will be out there digging and getting started on that. We've already been in contact with them. Now, once we start hammering and nailing the boards, we will set the date of the wedding. It will mm -hmm. probably be in the spring of 2024. Yes. 
But uh, we are going to get married, and that's the best I can tell you for the date, because everybody keeps asking. I know you're super excited. We're super excited, but we can't pick a date right now and then... Change it on you. You know, because <laughs> we have no control over what's happening right now with the house, mm -hmm. per se, until we start hammering and nailing, because we're doing the hammering and nailing. So then we'll have an idea yeah. when we'll be done. So we're... If you haven't noticed, we're kind of old-fashioned people. Yeah. So we're DIYers. I know hardcore. that I know not many people do this anymore, but we are building a house, and then when the house is moving ready, we are going to get married. Yeah. So um, because of that, it's really set on when the wedding is is right. when the house is going to be moving ready. We don't need to be 100% done. We just need there to be a roof, a right. floor walls insulated insulated like you can live yeah. in it you know yeah. better than a barn and then and then we can take our time over to the next year of you know finishing the downstairs finishing the upstairs and you know all that stuff as we go and you can you can paint in the winter time because you're inside it's insulated and you're living there you don't have to drive a half hour to it from your house or your current home you know so it, it just mm -hmm. makes it easier actually uh, yep and you don't you don't attack everything at once while you're living there because then it'd just be a mess so you you Pick one one room, you knock that out, then you move on to the next room, and you, you get that one done. So the bedroom will have the bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen room will have to be somewhat done first, and then we can move to the spare bedroom and blah right. blah blah. Right. And then on to the uh, age old battle of picking out the colors to paint the room. <laughs> no, I want red. No, I want blue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so probably it'll be next spring, and yes, you guys are invited. Not only are you invited, you better come to our wedding. It's mandatory. You better come. It's going to be a potluck. Now, we will have a RSVP thing set up on, on the internet. internet. So we have an idea who's coming. Um, I believe the Ford is going to cut us off at a certain amount. So we, we, need, we have to give them a somewhat of an accurate number for mm -hmm. how many people's coming. But that will be set up when we set the date. There, we have there's to no point know in doing that now. how many chairs to bring. Right. <laughs> so we need to have a rough idea how many people are coming. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're probably going to put up a website somewhere where you just simply say the number, how many's coming. Yeah, and please only commit if you're actually coming. Yeah. Because like I said, there'll be a cutoff point, so don't ruin it for somebody else if you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I just want to put my name on there. And, and then... because of you, my grandma can't come now. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, mom, you got to stay at home. Oh, man. <laughs> that would be horrible. Yeah, but it's. I know for sure it's going to be a potluck wedding. Now, if you guys live really far away, realistically, and you can't bring food, that is yeah. completely fine. Don't worry about it. There will still be enough food for everyone. Our family's going to bring food as well. But if you are available to bring a dish, we would really appreciate it. If yeah. you can't do it, if you think it's unhygienic to fly from Florida over here. Shoot, with stop by Domino's meatloaf. or get a Crave case. Or does Taco Bell have Taco like, Bell. Do they have like a 50 case of tacos or something? Bring, oh bring my whatever. gosh, I will love you if you come with a 50 case of the potato soft tacos potato from Taco Bell. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. Hey. Super not historic. But. All right, changing the subject. Speaking of food and traveling far away, this is for you, Connie Reed. We met a lovely lady from Ohio with her two daughters that came down this past weekend at Candy's, and they bought us dinner, and I do not have your contact info, so this is me thanking you very thank much you. for lunch yes. that day. Yes, yeah, thank you guys. If you want to come down to St. Genevieve, if you want to meet us, we will gladly meet up with you, um, as long as our schedules work out. Mm -hmm. But you just come down to Sassafras Creek Originals and send us an email a little bit before and we will try our best to come down mm. and meet you for a little bit. So we met up with this lovely lady and her family, I think she was from Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, afterwards... We had the beautiful eagle ornament. Yeah, they gave us a really pretty carved eagle. Awesome. But afterwards we went out to eat and they just coincidentally were there. And after we were done eating, I went to pay. Ron and I, we take turns paying. Mm -hmm. So one time he pays, then I pay, then he pays. Mish Mish is out the door. So I went up to pay and then the waiter said, uh, your order has already been paid for. I said, what? By who? And they said, by the lady that was just here and I knew who it was. So thank you so much. No one's ever actually done that for me. Nobody in my, nice. in my life. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Mish Mish. Come here. Come here. <laughs> no, he's just literally laying on the floor there, meowing. Very typical of him. Here he comes. Come on, kitty. There he is. 
Good Yay. boy. And he's filthy like always. He he's rolls a, like a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> he's the doggedest cat I've ever seen. Yeah, he's the doggedest <laughs> cat. Oh, also update on Mishmish. He had a tick on his butthole the other day. We had to pull it off. Uh, he had a tick <laughs> on his butthole. And I, we had to use tweezers to take it off, the poor thing. He had no other ticks on him except on his butthole. And so Ron had to hold him real tight, and I went in with the tweezers. The poor thing, it was buried in there. Oh, poor it, Mish Mish. But it, he didn't fight or nothing. No, no, he actually behaved pretty well, even though a chunk of meat came out with yeah, the tick. It was, it was pretty was buried disgusting. in there pretty bad. Poor buddy. Poor thing. But he didn't hiss. He didn't fight back. He's a really good cat. He really is. I'm grateful for so many things in my life. Grateful for you, I'm grateful for this cat, and I'm grateful for you. Yes. And for this food too. Well, hey, <laughs> let's get into some of these This Week in History topics. <laughs> this Week in History! Here go. we go! Alright, so the first one is April 30th, 1789. Uh, George Washington takes the oath of office to become the first president of the United States. What year again? 1789. And this happened in uh, New York City. This was not in Washington yet. I didn't know that. George Washington is the only president to not live in the White House because the White House didn't exist yet. Exactly. It wasn't even built. <laughs> right. So that took place at the Federal Hall on Wall Street in New York City. Hmm. I don't know if that's still there. I, I should look that up. That would be <clears> incredible <throat> if it was. We would have to go. The next, so there's quite a few that happened on April 30th. The next one on April 30th I have is in 1803. President Thomas Jefferson purchases the entire Louisiana Territory from France, Napoleon, really, for $15 million, doubling the size of the United States of America. Nowadays, good luck even buying 10 acres. <laughs> and that is over 500 million acres, and oh. if that, that comes out to be about four cents per acre. Now, that's a, oh, that's a steal of a deal Oh, what a dream. <laughs> that's <laughs> dreamy. That's a good deal. What is it, buddy? Some people... They lay awake at night thinking about, ooh, a Corvette, ooh, a fancy red Porsche. I lay awake at night thinking about four cents an acre with a stream and adequate sunlight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dreamy. <laughs> that is the greatest real estate deal in all of history. Yeah. And, and it will remain to be, too, because you'll never get that deal again. It's only going up from here, <laughs> unless you buy... Land on the moon. <laughs> I wonder how much. I mean, it'd be like a trillion dollars. The way way uh, more than a trillion dollars. We'll just take an average and say five. Um, five thousand acres. Five thousand acre times five hundred million acres. What does that come out to be? Beep, boop, 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 beep. I don't know, like five hundred trillion, <laughs> fifty trillion, <laughs> something like that. Gazillion. Oh, that's right. We'll just say it's a gazillion yeah. and leave it at that. How about you all comment the answer below? Please. <laughs> all right, and I got one more for April 30th, and we'll move on to the next day. Uh, in the year 1812, the territory of Orleans becomes the 18th state known as Louisiana. The territory of Orleans? Yes. It was called Orleans, apparently. Not even New Orleans? There was a city in New Orleans, but the territory was called Orleans. Oh, uh, man, I'm learning things right and left now. We're all learning things. I'm I learning when I'm that. looking these up and writing them down. That's really interesting. <laughs> all right. Uh, the next one is on May the 5th, because we're at the end of April. Says, I'm already at May. This is crazy. We're almost six months into this year. Where is time going? Me life. Where's it, where's it gone? It needs to slow down a little bit. All right, so on May 4th, 1776, the colony, Rhode Island, it's still a colony in May, is the first to renounce their allegiance to King George for independence. Because remember, when the Revolutionary War started, it was not for independence until 76. Before that, it was just fighting for your rights, and then they found out, oh yeah, we ain't got no rights because we we're not considered Englishmen, we're considered colonists. So Rhode Island was the very first... We're the first ones to step up and say, Independence! Okay. And then the rest, <laughs> they needed some persuasion. I think New York was like the last one to sign. He was, yeah, I don't know what that got us thinking. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then uh, I've got, I got two more left here. So on May 5th, 1809, a lady named Mary Kyes becomes the first woman to be awarded a U.S. patent. Any idea what she was patented for? I know, but do you know? Okay. You don't know, do you? 
I just, do. You're just saying it. I know. Then what is it? Uh, a weaving technique. How'd you do that? Well, hmm. I mean... You're pretty smart, I guess. I am pretty smart. She <laughs> patented a technique... Sometimes. ...for a weaving straw with silk thread. I have no idea what she huh. weaved. Weaving <laughs> straw with silk thread? Sounds like how you make, make hats. A hat? Right, how you make straw hats. Okay, well maybe she had a new way of doing it. And what year was that? That was 1809. 1809, the very first patent awarded to a woman in the United States. So I guess before you would just weave the straw, obviously, because they've had straw hats for <clears throat> Yeah, but you years. didn't have a pat. It wasn't patented. Right. But mm -hmm. with silk thread, I think you're right. Maybe she made dainty, hats. fancier hats. I think way. so. And then my last one here is way in the future, 1866. The very first Memorial Day celebration takes place in Waterloo, New York. Cool. 1866. In so, New it's York. so it's after the Civil War when they started doing uh, Memorial Day. Okay, I learned a lot in the past five minutes. Thank you, Ron Rayfield. Thank you, thank you. Here, well, I'm, I'm going to try some of this uh, rice pudding here. Yeah, let's move on <clears> to <throat> our next uh, delicacy here. What's this, buddy? You want some of this? We have <laughs> rice pudding, also from another American cookbook. Mm. Rice recipes for dessert. Are so common in this time period. That's good. I'm glad you like it. And I think mm. par partially it's because there were a lot of rice plantations in the southern United States mm -hmm. in the 18th and early 19th centuries. So it wasn't hard at all to get your hands on rice in America. Nowadays, I had so many comments where people say they didn't have rice in America. That's from China or Japan. <coughs> Only Asians had rice. Okay. <laughs> That, those were the biggest plantations down there, was rice plantations and cotton and tobacco and sugar cane. But rice was one mm. of the, the plantations that they would have had back then. Yeah, it's tasty. It is really good. And it's got rose water in it, which I don't even like. It, it smells like old lady's perfume. But it actually works <laughs> in this. I, I really, I'm digging this. You think so? I'm digging it. Okay. Mm. So the main worry with adding rose water into a dessert is it makes it taste kind of soapy. Makes it taste like you're eating perfume or oh, shampoo or soap. <laughs> you can't have no of this. It's too good. You don't <laughs> want it. I don't think the cat would like rose water. Probably not. <laughs> hey, don't forget, guys. Pioneer Day is this weekend. Today's Wednesday. That's what? Three days away. Saturday and Sunday here in St. Genevieve. May 6th to 7th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's not too late to come on down. <laughs> We've got food. Games, wagon rides, pottery, woodworking, cooking, militia, natives, music, pewter smith, blacksmith, gunsmith, scrimshaw, which is scratching the horns, or horning, <clears throat> fur trade, rope making, net making, uh, wool spinning, candle dipping, and laundry, and more. Woo! That's a lot! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! <laughs> So this is a free event. It's appropriate for all ages. Yes. It is in the yard of Candy Store Sassafras Creek Originals in St. Genevieve, Missouri. Uh, there is a flyer for it on the community tab of this channel. You can go check that out too. All the info is on there if you need the address yes. and times. Yes, it's Saturday and Sunday. I think Saturday is the better day, mm -hmm. but if you can't make it down on Saturday, come down on Sunday. It's from 10 to four o'clock both days. And I really hope we don't get rain on that day. Yes, everybody, please pray for a drought this weekend. Yeah, just this weekend, and then after that, it's fine. Yeah, they keep changing it. It was rain, then there was no rain. I was like, oh, great. And then this morning, I looked at it, it's like, oh! Yeah. So when you get there, there's a, a big grassy field that's a little bit down the street. You're going to park in that grassy field. It's called the Moses Austin Park. Yes, and there will be signs, so look for yes. them. So, so you just park in that big grassy field. It's free to park. The whole thing is free. And if you're handicapped, there will be a um, um, a golf a big limo cart golf cart. It's like right. a six seater or something. Candy's husband Dale will drive the golf cart and take you from the for the handicapped and yeah. older people. Yeah, from if you're the, young, you gotta walk from the grassy <laughs> field to the event location. It is a five minute walk, but if you cannot uh, do that. He will gladly drive you down. For free. You can give him tips. I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't say no. Just, <laughs> just Dale, if you're watching, don't tell Candy about your donations. <laughs> hey, so <clears throat> some of you might know this and some of you might not. We're big fans of Outlander. That's starting up soon. But hey, we found this new series that we checked out called Poldark. <clears throat> We're we obsessed. We love it. 
We're so obsessed. If if you if you never heard of Poldark and you like the show Outlander or vice versa, check the other one out because they're that's a great show. I love the villain on there. He's actually my my favorite character. He's George an excellent, Warlegan. excellent actor. They they cast it the the roles in that that TV show so well. They did. Hey, do you? Mine's you gone. ate all I yours? Want, I want some more, actually. It's really good. Okay, have mine. Okay, thank you. It, okay, so here's the thing. This has cream in it too, right? It does. Ho, ho, I ho, do ho, not ho. like nutmeg. <laughs> you know how so, to some people cilantro tastes like soap? For me, nutmeg tastes like soap. It isn't the rose water in it. It's the nutmeg. Every time I eat anything that has nutmeg in it, it tastes like I'm eating a bar of soap. So I good. don't know why, but unfortunately there is nutmeg in here because I had to follow the recipe and it tastes kind of soapy and perf I don't know, it just tastes like I'm eating shampoo. It's it's not good. Well, it's the best shampoo I've ever ate. <laughs> it's funny because... Oh, uh, how often you do that? Mm, twice a week. That's where all my shampoo is going! <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because I thought that Ron was going to be the one that didn't like it and I was going to be the this. one that liked it. This is delicious. I'm really glad that you enjoy that. Oh, I mean. That is really cool. I mean, we've made, I don't know, four dishes maybe by this point? Rice desserts on this channel because you can't throw a rock in historic cookbook universe without hitting a rice dessert from this time period. Rice desserts were so common they're easy. that they're very easy. I think the rice was very affordable for people living in the United States because like I said, mm -hmm. there were a lot of rice plantations down in the South. Mm -hmm. It ships very well because you just dry the rice yeah. and you can ship it all over. It lasts a long time. Lasts a pretty <clears throat> long time. So everyone had access to rice in the United States, really. Um, too bad I had nutmeg in it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of eating, you want to talk about them little tiny eggs you got over there? Yes. Okay, so Ron's uncle. The brother of the River Rat Boys. Uncle Randy. Uncle Randy. He is the father of the River Rat oh, yeah. Boys. Not the brother. <laughs> My so, bad. So the um, his cousins are actually the River Rats. <clears throat> yes. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Every time we go over to his place, we leave with way more than we came there with. Mm -hmm. um, so we left there yesterday with three chickens and about 30 quail eggs. And they also fed us dinner. So I'm yeah. happy. Thank you, Uncle Randy, if you're watching this. Yes, I'm sure he is. So look at these incredibly cute quail eggs. I know I want to eat one. It looks like the little chocolates at uh, Easter time. This is not. a quail egg, <laughs> and you're right, it does look like the chocolate eggs, and I'm sure that's what they based it off of. It kind of has the cow print on it, yeah. where it's like black and white. This is a chicken egg. This is a quail egg. So it's like a three to one, four to one. I was told it's four to one, but there isn't really an exact math on that. Because <laughs> your eggs are bigger and smaller mm -hmm. now then. Right. Now, to me, quail eggs taste like chicken eggs. Yeah. They do taste like it. Um, it's, I guess, a bit more yolk than you'd get with a chicken egg. But other than that, it tastes the same to me. You just have to crack four of them into your skillet for every one egg that you would normally eat for breakfast. <laughs> so what I do is I crack them all into a little bowl, and then I put them in a skillet at once. Yes. If, if you're wanting to make it as a, a, a one unit. Otherwise, you're going to have little bitty ones that are going to be cooking at different temperatures. But if you want it to all come up at one time, and it looks really pretty, too. If you got four little yolks sitting there inside a puddle of, of the whites. Yeah, and the, sh <laughs> the shells are really thick compared to chicken eggs. You think, oh, these are so delicate and dainty. I can't even breathe next to them. But <laughs> no, the shell is actually pretty thick. You actually have to use scissors yes. to get into these. They sell special <laughs> egg scissors. Yes, you can crack them just from pounding it as well. But when you're eating 10 of them, that gets old real quick without getting the shell into it. So they actually sell these special egg scissors. Now my dad got a jar of these from my uncle, but they were boiled and pickled. Yeah, he, Uncle Randy also pickles quail eggs. Now I've never had pickled eggs, boiled eggs in my life, and I always knew it would just be nasty. But I said, <laughs> sure, I'll try one. This was like a big white olive, and it was delicious. He liked I really them. enjoyed it. I ate like four of them, and then I paid for it later, but they were, uh. they were good. <laughs> Yeah, so he has, I don't even know how many quail. That's a secret, gentlemen. Get yourself a woman that can withstand the winds. I can't withstand the winds. I don't know what he's talking about. I can't withstand it. You got winds yourself. I'm only human, okay? 
You don't have to announce all my secrets to the world now. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we love y'all. We're gonna hop off here because we got some tents to set up for uh, Pioneer Days. I'm and, and so the sun's still shining, so we've got to get back to town yeah. and start helping. I am so excited to meet you guys at Pioneer Days. Yes. Come on down if you can. And mark your calendars because sometime next spring we are going to get married so please come to our wedding as well we know that it's going to be at fort de Chard, yep. which is in illinois yep. it's going to be next spring sometime we just don't have an exact date and it's going to be a potluck but if you can't bring food don't stress it and it'll be middle of the day it ain't going to be a nighttime wedding yeah it's not going to be a, a till two in the morning kind of wedding we're kind of boring people it's going to be a dry wedding it's, yeah. I think that the... No open bar here. I'm pretty sure that Fort de Chard is a... It's a state it's site. It's a state site, so we can't have a bar at a state site. So it's going to be a dry wedding. Um, I mean, sure, if you sneak a bottle, I guess I, I'm, it's whatever. But we're not going to drink any, and the wedding's yeah. not going to go on till 2 in the morning. Yeah. So it's going to be a morning and afternoon wedding. That's all we know yet. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you at Pioneer Days. We will film a little bit of it for you. Just like last year. Just like last year. Yeah, check out last year's video. It's still up on Ron's channel, Frontier Patriot. Yes. Just search for Pioneer Days and it'll pop up. So guys, take care. We love you and see you soon. Bye-bye.